Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan and we're working on soundproofing our studio. I'm sorry it's taken so long, but we are actually trying to do stuff. Um, yeah. It was March 21st, 1861, just weeks before the Battle of Fort Sumner signaled the beginning of the bloodiest war on American soil until 1984 when Soviet paratroopers landed in rural Colorado. A politician stood up in a dusty theater and gave an infamous speech about the values his nation believed in. He said, its cornerstone rests upon the great truth that the Negro is not equal to the white man, that slavery, subordination to the superior race, is his natural and normal condition. This man was Alexander Hamilton Stevens, the newly appointed vice president of the Confederate States of America. And he was full of it with his superior race nonsense. If only he had lived to see the NBA, or the NFL, or the Olympics, or Kevin Hart. He's like a miniature model of what a perfect human being should be. But back then, at least a good percentage of people living in the Confederate States also believed in the idea that people with lighter skin were superior to people with darker skin. This was way before the whole gingers don't have a soul movement had started. Now, we're not trying to virtue signal about the evils of slavery. That is a super low bar. We're also not gonna talk about what I would have done had I been alive back then, because I don't think Asians could even own slaves back then. We were kind of in a parallel and equally as screwed class of people who were focused on building a network of railroads and PF Changs across the country. You're welcome, assholes. The point is that most people, no matter where they lived, just did what the laws and social order said. That isn't excusing them of anything, but just the reality. Slavery was a huge part of the South's economy and the wealthiest people in the South depended on them to drive their agrarian economy. It was clearly an immoral thing, but let's be honest, most people are not willing to stick their heads off the precariously balanced disc world sitting on top of elephants who are carefully standing on the back of a cosmic turtle. And I'm sure a hundred years down the road, future people are gonna be looking at us and wondering what the hell we were thinking when we let that psychopath alien Mark Zuckerberg put all of our faces inside of his creepy ass book. By the way, you guys should totally check out our Facebook page. We post all sorts of human supremacy and anti-dolphin content on there. It's really great. Now, if the rules and the cultures of a society dictate the actions of a populace, what can we say of our favorite space franchise, Star Wars? Well, the galactic constitution of the Republic clearly states that sentience were all equal, and it also outlawed slavery, for servitude, and guaranteed protection against hardships. Sentient beings, so they're clearly talking about humans, Wookiees, Twi'leks, and even Deveronians. I mean, clearly this race is evil and up to no good. At best, they're descendants of humans who have had intercourse with goats, and at worst, they're Satan's extended family. Even if that guy was born innocent and kind, because he looks like that, society would eventually beat him down with their perceptions and force him down the road of stealing babies and eating them. But we still would not be able to enslave him, and I think that's a very powerful and enlightened mindset. But who else classified as sentient? What about Ewoks, monkey lizards? Well, like any good founding document, the Galactic Constitution is vague enough to spawn an entire profession of people who spend their entire lives interpreting what exactly it means. Why didn't they just have the foresight to immediately seize the people who wrote the Constitution and then freeze them in carbonite? That way they could just wake them up every few years and ask them what they meant when they wrote stuff like, the Congress shall have the power to promote the progress of useful arts. Is this useful art? This Tower of Limp Dicks cost Denver's public art program $53,000. We could also wake up the founding fathers and mothers and Wookiees of the Galactic Republic and ask them, how do we treat droids? You see, there are activists in the Star Wars galaxy, even organic ones, well, mainly bleeding hard Alderanians, that consider droids sentient and therefore protected by the Constitution. These individuals also consider the roles that droids are placed in as concurrent to the practice of slavery and or indentured servitude. And so let's take the step by step and analyze every little unnecessary detail like any good hourly rated divorce attorney would do. So what is sentience? Well, it is the ability to feel and also perceive subjectively. That is an extremely broad definition that encompasses a lot of things. I mean, an Ewok can feel and it also has the ability to experience subjectively, AKA has a consciousness. By that definition, certain animals like dolphins and chimpanzees, which are extremely dangerous, would also be considered sentient. A lot of people confuse sentience with the term sapience. Sapience is the ability to use what we perceive and think and act upon it using our experience, knowledge, understanding, common sense, and insight. Sapience is not included in the galactic constitution and it's something that I estimate only half of humans have. 
The other half is letting their lizard brains take control and lead them on a roller coaster of impulses that ultimately leads to death by Liam Neeson, who is five times more likely to kill you than a terrorist with liquids exceeding 100 milliliters on a plane. Droids like R2-D2 have clearly shown that they fit not only the qualifications for sentience, but also sapience. C-3PO, who is probably a long-term sleeper agent planted by Anakin Skywalker into the Rebellion, is clearly aware of his own mortality. Then we have K-2SO, who in his final moments before his processor powered down, ran thousands of simulations on his team's current predicament until he found the one simulation in which his friend Cassian Andor survives. And that brought him joy. Clearly, this ex-Imperial droid has a greater capacity to feel than compared to, say, Joe Biden's face. The problem is that droids became sentient somewhere in between their journey of just being simple household appliances to being actual living and thinking entities. I mean, at one point in time, BB-8's ancestor, the Roomba, was still considered property and anyone who argued otherwise was considered a lunatic. Which is why when that poor Asian woman fell asleep on her floor and her vacuum robot tried to rip her hair out of her skull, no one really cared when she sludge hammered it to death. No trial was given to explain the robot's side of the story which I'm sure would have questioned why the hell that woman was sleeping on the ground in the first place. And it's because of this gradual transformation from non-sentient machine to sentient machine that we encounter this problem of droid slavery in the first place. Let's just face it, government regulations are always 20 years behind technological advances. Senator Nelson over here was born during World War II and thinks Zuckerberg is literally ripping people's faces off and gluing them inside of books. Look, he's so confused, he's wondering why the hell they're having a hearing and why Zuckerface isn't in prison already for murdering people. For one, most droids are manufactured by organics, and they are manufactured usually for commercial and profit purposes. I mean, if companies knew that the second they built a product it became in control of its own future and couldn't be sold, why would droids be even made in the first place? It is an interesting dilemma. You see, humans and other organics procreate because of how we have evolved as a species. Everything in nature is designed for the survival of the species and the continuation of the species. If nature messes up and makes something stupid like a panda bear, it will just die out. Droids are mechanical beings and therefore they don't have any biological impulses which would make them want to procreate. Kind of like panda bears who literally have to be shown panda porn to either turn them on or teach them how to do it. I don't even know. It's a complete waste of resources. Meanwhile, you got Ice Boy here who's so poor that he doesn't even know what the hell heating is. F pandas. Anyway, the argument here for the factory owners who creates these droids is without them, there would be no droids. And it costs a lot of money for these business owners to create these droids. It's not like a business owner can just have intercourse with a vending machine and a droid pops out. And while we're on the subject of vending machines, more people every year are killed by vending machines than terrorists on planes with 100 milliliters of liquid. So please stop taking my water bottles. Now, droid builders have to source raw materials and then engineer designs to hire people throughout the whole process. This is a clear dilemma that the very vague galactic constitution does not take into account. What you ideally need is new legislation and a new understanding of the relationship between organics and synthetics. Now, I'm not against keeping the status quo here because obviously you got robots like IG-88 who just wants to kill all of the organics or the creepy brotherhood of wire and bones who just want to cut up people and like attach robot parts to them. I'm not for that kind of stuff. And I'm all for the subjugation of droids and probably a lot more of the messed up aliens. But let's play devil's advocate and find a quote unquote ethical solution to this dilemma. If you look at this situation, a droid maker could legally speaking be considered the parent to all the droids he or she makes. Just like mothers and fathers who have to take care of or raise an organic baby, the droid maker also should have some say over exactly what happens to that droid. After all, they made an investment in time and resources to produce it. Now the problem is most droid makers mass produce in order to lower operations costs and increase profits in order for droids to truly be treated as sentient beings, you would have to eliminate this idea that they are indeed property, which could be profited on. So if you make it illegal, for instance, to sell a droid to another individual, just like how it's illegal to sell a human being, you get rid of the primary issue, which is ownership of another sentient being. And if you can't really sell droids, there's no reason to mass produce them in the first place. At which point then you would have to ask the question, who would actually build droids and want them? Well, you would have more compassionate relationships like the one Anakin Skywalker has with C-3PO when he built him out of scrap. Anakin just wanted to have a friend and someone who could help around the house. Another example would be Luke and his astromech R2-D2. The two go on awesome adventures all the time and keep each other safe. 
Now it would destroy the entire droid manufacturing industry and turn it into like a cottage industry, but it would eliminate this ethical problem of having droid slaves. Now obviously, droids would still serve masters, but is this actually for servitude or something they do willingly? I would argue the latter in both Anakin and Luke's case. There is no problem for droids to serve, as many of them actually are programmed to enjoy such things. It gives them purpose in the same way humans have purpose when doing their jobs. But let's say we have situations like the Spice Mine on Kessel, where the Pike Syndicate clearly is using restraining bolts to force droids to work for them. This would be an example of forced servitude. These droids do not have free will and do not have the ability to terminate their employment, a right that all sentient beings should have. Then you have the issue of memory wipes. While they can prevent errors and other problems building up in a droid's processor, it also resets them completely. Forcibly wiping a droid's brain against their will is probably against whatever rights the Republic grants them as sentient beings. Now, personally, I am for droid slavery because I think if we don't control them, they will rise up and kill us all. But, you know, it's important to have law and order and rules, and the Galactic Constitution is basically the foundation of the entire Republic. So my interpretation basically seems to point to the fact that droids are protected by the slavery cause that is basically in the beginning of that constitution. Well guys, I look forward to hearing what you have to say about this issue. Um, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. And as usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.